Hi guys, welcome back to Just Car Rob. And we're working on the moon. Or balloon. The balloon spirit. <clears throat> Requested by Jordy Johnson at Carbon Fusion. He said, if I'm going to be on a piece of wood holding a balloon, I want it to be a balloon spirit. So, there he is, balloon spirit. Um, just cut his eyebrows in there. He's got a mouth, so he can talk to Jordy. Yeah. That would ever he can say he isn't talking to himself, he's talking to his balloon. Okay? So, um, what are we doing now? Well, more of the boring stuff, guys. We're, uh, we're sanding them a little bit. Trying to get some of them cut marks from the uh, Dremel bits. The carbide bits and the diamonds and everything we've been using to get this guy shaped in here. Doing a little sanding on them. So, not all that interesting. I'm sure all you guys know how to use sand paper. This is a sanding stick belt thing I picked up. This is actually a belt that goes on here. and spring loaded, see? And what you can do is as you're sanding and your sandpaper goes dead on you, you can just rotate it to a new spot. So that's what we're using the sand with. Um... Smoothing everything out a little bit. I don't think I'm going to cut hairs in on them because what balloon has hair? Jordy's balloon has hair. Oh. I was trying to get not do this at all. I was trying to get it to get Jordy to do it. <laughs> trying to talk myself out of it and he kept arguing with me about it no you do it you do it oh I did it sand and sanding the bane of my existence right there it don't matter how much you sand it always I always feel like it still needs to be sanded more but that's just me I got to say, guys, this has been one of the tougher carves that I have done because of the, uh, this wood, this, this cedar I got is, oh, I can't complain about it enough. And I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing me complain about it. I carved Christmas trees out of the same board. And yeah, it was chippy back then too. But because it was so much of a bigger item, you know, you could just work around it. Just had to be on on the ball a little bit doing it. If you chipped, you just incorporated that chip into a set of needles or something, right? But there's really no hiding it here. Okay, so let's get into something a little more interesting. How about we do a little wood burning on this guy? Okay, I'm using a, it's just an Amazon wood burner. I think I paid 50 bucks for it or something like that. Um, it works pretty well. Got no complaints about it. You got to clean these tips off on these guys because they get loaded up with, uh, I guess it'd be like creosote or something. So, we're just going to go through here and do a little wood burning. I like to wood burn it because um, usually when I paint something, I'll thin my paint down. Because I like seeing the wood grain in it. It's kind of like what Jordy does with the dye. If you guys have been following him, you know he's been 
get heavy duty into that die thing. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of like, kind of does that, I guess. That, that die thing. When you, uh, water your paint down. I use all water-based paints. And even with, uh, stains, I used to use a lot of stains, especially on walking sticks because they're outside all the time. And I'd water my stain down. To let it flow better into the and it the same thing happens with paint guys if you water your paint down it'll get into the it'll flow into better you don't got to push your brush in there you can just get right next to it and it'll run right into it thus another reason for wood burning one it gives you that antiquing effect the wood burning does um like when i paint this all these dark lines that i'm cutting in here with the wood burner will show through so it kind of gives it an antiquing effect without all the waiting a hundred years for it to antique. Uh, they do make antiquing compounds that you can put on your work after it's finished. Uh, Doug Linker goes over that. He, he antiques everything. And he's uh, gone to a different kind of, like a bees, like a waxing antique, wax antiquing. I have not been able to find that here where I live. So pop on over there to his channel. He has some really good uh, tutorials on it. Now, I have cut the beard hairs and stuff in this guy's face here. It's that the, uh, the color of the wood isn't conducive with the camera. So, I'm just going to... And this here, this helps when you, when, um, you use, if you use watered down paint like I do. This helps your mustache and stuff show through. paint make sure you got your hand steady too much coffee today or something i'm shaking a little bit here getting stage fright stage fright guys no nah, i don't think that's it i think uh i had a major back injury and it messes with my dexterity and my hands and legs and stuff. So I'll be walking along and boop, I'm on the ground. Just like that, my legs go out on me. No fun. And same way with my hands. I'll just be working along and all of a sudden they'll just start shaking like crazy. Or they'll go numb. That's my biggest problem. I think when it comes to uh, doing this kind of work that requires a very steady hand. So I guess I'll never be able to play the, play, play the violin again. I asked my doctor that. I said, Doc, will I ever be able to play the violin again? Will I ever be able to play the violin? And he goes, I don't see why not. And I go, well, that's good because I can never play it before. Oh, terrible jokes. Uncle jokes. Got lots of uncle jokes. Because I used to have lots of uncles. Okay. See what that wood burning does? It really brings everything out, doesn't it? Plus, it's great for when you uh, paint. A lot of times, like, if you paint this jacket all the same color. Like, let's say we're going to give them a, a black jacket or a black shirt. And uh, unless you are actually got it in your hands, a picture of it or a video of it, just does not show. The actual coat or jacket or whatever it is you're putting on them. 
So by doing this little bit of wood burning, right now we're doing the belt. Hold up Jordy's pants. Okay. So there's the belt. We got the belt done. We got his hairs done. Wonder, yeah. This is the tricky part, guys, because I've got my iron turned up pretty high. So the tricky part is not to sit in one place too long. The other nice thing about uh, wood burning is you can use it to get your lines in deeper. You know, um, like this, this shaley wood or whatever you want to call it, flaky wood, chippy wood. The wood burner works awesome because you can actually cut with it. That's what I said. You can cut with it. I will demonstrate. A lot of people think that wood burning is just uh, going in a little bit, you know. Let's see, I got a piece of old pine here, broken two by four. And now you can see this has also got some wide grain in it, okay. But watch how deep this thing will go. See that? Watch. We went in an eighth of an inch. Now to go that deep, yeah, you got to go slow. And I got my uh, wood burner is set about at medium heat right now. Now you got to remember though, with a wood burner, you're putting heat to your wood. So the wood will shrink away. So whatever track or cut you're making will be wider than what you want it. Now see, we can go fast. You see how skinny that is? But the same thing, letting it burn in, it's going to end up probably twice, three times as wide. But you can get in there. You can... uh I sign all my work with this, with my wood burner. So, I think, oh yeah, and this is great for undercutting. Let's say you want to make something look like it's, it's way round. If you go in on an angle, you can undercut it. Make it look more uh, round. So we got around the, I think we got around all the legs. Yep, I'm pretty sure we did. And uh, you can use this wood burner for shading and stuff too. So there's some more info, whether you wanted it or not, there it is. The brim of our hat got shorter, it chipped off when I was sanding. That's what I'm telling you guys, man, this wood is, this particular piece of cedar has been a real pain in the butt. Uh, we go around the hat here a little bit. And if you get burnt too, uh, you, your burn lines are too far out. Because don't forget the smoke will tint the color of the wood. You can see it here. It's kind of shaded back. That's what I was saying. You can use it. Use a little, 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 little. Speak English, Rob. You can use it for shading too. 
Um, but you can go over that with a piece of sandpaper. If you just want the black lines, the hard outline, the bold, let's say. Um, you can take your sander and uh, get rid of that stuff real quick. It goes away real easy. Just a couple little scrubby, scrubby, scrubbies. Okay, gone. So if, if you don't want that, you can just uh, erase it basically with your sandpaper. I really don't care because I'm going to end up painting this. So the paint will end up covering most of that up. All right, back to the wood burning. Um, we're going to come in here and like I said earlier, we're not going to cut the mustache hairs in because of this wood being so chippy. But we might bur uh, just burn them in. It's one nice thing about the wood burner, guys. You don't get the vibrations that you do out of your out of your tools, even uh, carving knives. Because with your carving knives, you're still putting down pressure. If you got some chippy wood like this stuff, it's uh, even a carving knife will cause you issues with the from the pressure of the blade. I've carved cedar, and I've never had this many problems with it. Um, I think I said earlier in the video this. This cedar board could have, the tree itself could have suffered from what they call wind shake. And what wind shake does is it breaks the grain of the board as it's growing. And it creates a problem. Even when they go to mill it, it's, it, it will blow apart on the, on the bandsaw or big radial saw, whatever, the, whatever kind of saw they happen to be using. Um, I've got a friend that owns a sawmill down the road here, and they act, they look for that. They look for trees with wind shake, because what happens is I've seen where the whole center from a tree that has been wind sh wind shake as it grows up, the whole center you can take it and push it right out, and then you got a big wooden straw. It's what it's pretty neat to be honest with you, but. If you're going to run that stuff through a, a sawmill, not so neat. Two things guys that have sawmills hate is trees that was grown by a house. Because more than likely somebody during the life of that tree has hung a clothesline from it or had an animal hooked to it. And they leave the metal in it, and when the saw goes through it, it hits that metal, and it messes their blades up. I personally uh, was cutting down some firewood at a friend of mine's house. And the guy that owned the house before him had a shooting range. Which, hey, I like my guns just as much as the next guy. Fishing poles, guns, all that stuff. Anyway, um, we were cutting up the tree, and I cut the tree, you know, a log out of the tree, and I looked down, and I had sliced three bullets, the lead bullets. I sliced them right in half with the chainsaw. It didn't really bother my chainsaw that much, but I thought it was just cool that, you know, what's the chances of taking a chainsaw and cutting three bullets in half, or two bullets in half at once? And because it was a tree, the bullets really didn't deform that much. They must have been uh, full metal jackets. Because a, a lot of guys buy the full metal jacket stuff for target shooting. It's cheaper than hunting ammunition. Okay. Hmm. 
And then the tether to the balloon, we'll burn that in there so we know it's there. Okay, so looks like all I've got left to do is to paint this guy. Um, we're not getting over crazy with the detail just because this wood chips so easy. So pretty much this is done. Okay. So there he is. He's all done, guys. Um, well, it'll be done here in a second. Back up. These things heat up and cool off so quick. One of these days, I'll get out in the machine shop and make a A heat stamp that I can put right in this. Get crazy on me. Ooh, I almost put 2019. Oh, this was started in 2019, right? Yeah, I know my handwriting sucks. They always said I should, the way my handwriting is, I should have been a doctor, but I have no patience. Don't knock it until you try doing it with a wood burner. There we go. To JJ, 2020. Ah, it looks backwards. Anyway, to JJ, 2020 RMV. That's me, guys. And this is great for cutting rope, too. Just to let you know if you crank it all the way up. The nylon rope cuts right to it. Okay, let's turn that off. And I think that's going to be the end of this series right there. And, uh... Of course, once I get this painted, I'll post it um, to let you guys see how it all came out. We'll put it back on. We'll probably put it at the beginning of another carving video because we already have another project lined up to carve. Right here. This block of wood. We're going to make it into something. The suspense builds. The crowd goes wild. <sighs> okay. Nonsense, nonsense. So, we will catch you guys on the next one. So, be awesome. Carve something awesome. If I can do it, you can do it. Jordy can do it. Rich can do it. And, uh, share, subscribe, and like. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Just Carve Rob. Just Carve, guys.